Parents kicked me out as a teen. Ten years later, they squatted in my home after bankruptcy until I took them to court and kicked them out. This is a rant story, and I just need a place to vent this. I don't want to reveal any details that would get me recognized, especially by my parents if they happened to be on Reddit. So please, no one ask for any details I don't already provide in this post. I'm 30 male, and my parents didn't really want kids. I was an only child, and pretty much an accidental pregnancy from what relatives have told me is my parents claimed that they were going to be child-free when they married. My childhood was initially good, but I think after I started growing out of the cute and adorable phase, my parents were less inclined to spend time with me. They both worked and had their own business that they started together. That business was their life and I was always second fiddle to it. Any other close members of family like my grandparents lived states away, and I barely knew anything about them till I was an adult, so I had no other family around my entire childhood. I was practically raised by TV and my school teachers. My own birthdays by the time I became a teenager were often spent without my parents as they'd just give me some money and tell me to go out and buy whatever I wanted. It was more or less the same with Christmas and sometimes even back to school shopping. We wouldn't have even had a Christmas tree after I turned 10 if it weren't for the fact I convinced my parents to buy a fake one I could build up and then take apart later every year. If I were to describe my parents, think of them as those people who always wear black, drink lots of wine, and look down their noses at people. And the last I saw of my parents, they still looked and acted the same way. Although my father was always wearing a toupee now. When I turned 16 I asked my parents if I could work part-time for them at their business, and they just told me they had no open positions or anything like that. They may as well have just come right out and said they didn't want me there. After I turned 18 my parents told me that since I was an adult, they expected me to move out as soon as I was able. I was working part-time because I was still in high school and I didn't have anywhere near enough saved for college. And not long after high school ended my parents told me to pack up and move out. They got an official eviction notice that gave me 30 days and everything. They didn't even help me move. I had to get help from a friend's dad who owns a truck. I ended up renting a crappy apartment and working retail. I had no real life experience and no time for college. Then after just a few months I got fired because my manager legitimately had it out for me and wrote me up for the stupidest things. I don't even remember what they were anymore. But I wasn't the only one the manager treated that way. I called corporate about it and so did a few other people. Corporate looked into the manager and they were soon fired for various reasons. Not many of which I actually know since it was mostly kept quiet. But someone told me theft of cigarettes was a part of it and the manager was a chain smoker. Corporate refused to rehire me and only said that they'd change the record to say I was laid off instead of terminated so my resume would still be clean. Guess they considered me damaged goods or something. I ended up going broke pretty fast because I was terrible at managing my own money and couldn't find steady employment. So I lost my apartment. I went back to my parents begging for help, but they refused to take me in. Not even for a little while to get back on my feet. I ended up homeless and living out of a tent in someone's backyard in winter. My friends had all moved on to college, some in other states, and I was a broke kid taking whatever work I could to stay alive. My salvation came when one of the neighbors of my parents found out I was living out of a tent and offered to take me in for a little while so I wouldn't freeze. She helped me badger my parents into telling me how to get in touch with the other members of my estranged family. My parents did not want to say. My guess is out of fear of being judged for throwing their son out the way they did. But they coughed up the info and gave me a list of contact details, and then told me not to bother them ever again. I called my grandparents from my father's side of the family, and they were very surprised and happy to hear from me because they hadn't seen me since I was an infant, and I'm their only grandchild. My grandparents, after finding out my situation, flew me over to live with them as soon as they could. They basically adopted me. My parents didn't even see me off at the airport despite being invited to. I had zero contact with them for pretty much a decade. My grandparents said they despised my parents for treating me so poorly and legally disowned them by striking them from their wills. My parents I'm told were not happy to hear that, but also said it didn't really matter because they were plenty well off and didn't need anything from my grandparents. How wrong that statement turned out to be. After about a year of living with my grandparents I was able to afford to start going to community college. I got an associate's degree, got a decent job thanks to a recommendation from my grandpa, and eventually my grandparents offered to sell me their house so they could retire to Arizona. My grandma wanted to live in a warmer climate as the cold winter was getting harder and harder on her health every year. I was sad to see them go, but I happily bought the house. They sold it to me for one-third its value. 
and I'll have it paid off in a few more years. My job has me going away on the road periodically, so I can end up away from home for weeks at a time. Not that I mind the travel. I have no pets or a girlfriend, or anything like that. I wouldn't have time for them right now. But in a few years when I have some things in order I'll make time. I don't want to stay a lonely bachelor forever. Then one day in late 2020 I came home after being away for over two weeks, only to find a large white van I did not recognize in my driveway. I was getting ready to call police when I noticed the van had the logo from my parents' business on the side of it. And I felt dread. Yes my parents were there. They'd broken in somehow and were living out of my home. And they had the nerve to greet me like we were buddy, buddy the moment I walked in. I told them to get the hell out, and they refused because it was grandma and grandpa's house. I said it wasn't their house anymore. They'd sold it to me when they retired. They'd have known that if they were in any way involved with my life. But they threw me to the wolves ten years prior with no life experience. We argued and they refused to leave. My father told me it was his parents' house first, and that meant he and my mother had the right to live there if they wanted. I walked right into my bedroom, locked the door and called the police. When the cops showed up they were of no help. My parents claimed to them that they had already been there long enough to have residency, which was a complete lie. But I had no cameras to prove they weren't there a month. My neighbors had no cameras either, so it was my word against my parents over how long they'd really been there, and they were claiming squatters' rights. They told police they had a verbal rental agreement with me, and that I was trying to illegally evict them for no reason. My mother even put on the waterworks when saying that. The police told me it was a family dispute, and to file eviction with the courts to get them out. And this was in 2020. Getting to court for anything took longer because of the pandemic. Meanwhile my parents are squatting in my house rent free and rubbing it in my face. From the information I got out of them, their business went bankrupt and they sold off almost everything they had to pay their debts. All they had left was the van and a few personal belongings. So they expected to live in my house rent free for the foreseeable future. They were working too. Both of them soon got new jobs. My father is a delivery driver, my mother is a sales associate. They were making money, and the only things they contributed to was electricity and water utilities, which was basically just handing me a $100 bill every month and saying I should be grateful they were paying me anything. Anytime I tried to discuss proper rent with them, they just said I owed it to them to live rent-free because I took 18 years of their lives. And it's not like they were demanding the money back for that time then threatened to stop helping with the utilities altogether. I was so at my wits end that I ended up calling my grandparents to explain the situation to them. They were very unhappy and spoke with my parents, but my parents still said they had the right to stay in my home and refused to budge. My grandpa told me he was sorry it had come to this and that if they hadn't sold me the house, my parents wouldn't have invaded. I told him not to worry. I'd already filed for a legal eviction and would get it soon enough. And my parents already knew that they were on borrowed time. I made sure to say that in earshot of my parents too. They responded with the silent treatment. My father was away most of the time driving a delivery vehicle six days a week, which was a job really not to his liking. And my mother basically tried to take over my house in her spare time. She demanded I let her rearrange my living room and even tried to force me to give her and my father the master bedroom, because they were my parents, and they deserve better, as she put it. I vetoed both of those things and said they don't deserve better, and to stop trying to act like I owe them anything. I didn't ask to be born, and it's a normal obligation for parents to raise their own children, and all they were doing was trying to assert dominance to try and keep me from kicking them out. Finally after four months and now into early 2021, I managed to take my parents to court over their squatting. We only needed to go to court because they fought the eviction and tried to gaslight me into rescinding it. They tried to use the fact it was formerly my grandparents' house and the fact that they were giving me $100 a month as some sort of leverage of residency. But there was no real rental agreement, and they were smart enough not to try and forge one as that would have been fraud. So the judge ordered that they needed to be out in a maximum of 30 days because they have zero claim on my house. After court they confronted me and said they were disappointed in me for kicking out my own flesh and blood. I couldn't help but laugh and called them hypocrites because that's exactly what they did to me without a care in the world for my well-being. They had no love for me, so I have no love for them. I owed them nothing. They just tried to act like everything that was mine is theirs. But they had no right to call themselves my parents because they've never really acted like it. I called them a pair of snobby lying narcissists to their faces and told them to get their affairs in order. Because they already know I won't hesitate to call police if they don't leave my house when the 30 days are over. My father looked enraged, but my mother stopped him from saying or doing anything by grabbing his shoulder and shaking her head. 
He sneered at me and walked away. They left, but not without a lot of tension. That final month was spent with them either guilting me to try and make me change my mind, or completely ignoring me. I put up a calendar in the living room and checked off each day before they had to leave with a red marker. And the exact day they were to be out was marked with a big red circle. I still remember that final day was March 2nd. My parents waited until the exact day they had to leave my home for good before they finally left. Even when all their stuff was out of the house and they were sleeping on the floor in the guest room for a few days. Since they were so convinced they could make me let them stay, they didn't bother to try and look for an apartment until after the court eviction went through. And my mother spent weeks scrambling to find an apartment. They had to get a tiny and crappy studio apartment in the next city over because it was the only thing they could find on such short notice. A lot like what I had to do when I was 18. Quite ironic. I drove my mother over to see it once, and the apartment was terrible. The walls were baby barf green. The carpet looked like it was 20 years old. The only window just had a view of a brick wall outside. There was no dishwasher. The stove was the smallest one I'd ever seen. And the toilet looked like it really needed to be replaced. The walls also did little to stop noise from neighbors. There was already two people loudly fighting in the adjacent apartment while we were there. My mother went out of her way to try and give me sad looks while dropping hints that I should be feeling guilty that I was reducing them to live in such a place. But I just acted oblivious to it all until she finally stopped. They signed the lease right away and moved what little stuff they had into the apartment over the weekend. They also ended up demanding the queen-size bed, dresser and flat-screen TV from my guest room. I told them to just take the damn things because I no longer wanted them in the house after they spent five months sleeping in that room. They looked at me like I was treating them as though they were diseased and demanded nothing more. The moment they had to leave for good, I started changing the locks on all exterior doors. All their stuff was at the apartment, and they'd spent their last night in my guest room. They watched me start ripping the old lock off the front door as they were getting into the van. They said nothing, I said nothing. But they just sat and watched me for a while until I had the new door knob on. Then they finally left. I breathed a massive sigh of relief the second that van went down the road. I figured karma had finally come for them, and they could live under a rock for all I cared. But nope, my grandparents heard from them recently. They called them to brag that had a new business similar to their old one in the same state as I'm living in now. And they are basically on track to be right back to where they used to be in life prior to the pandemic, which was making good money and looking down on others. I've already googled their new business, and it seems like it's doing well. They have many positive reviews and everything. I'm pretty friggin' resentful truth be told. They put me through being homeless, squatted for next to free at my house for months, then went right back to being the snobby wine-drinking business people they used to be. If karma is real, it's taking too damn long. Edit, I would like to thank everyone for all the constructive advice, and many of the points that are being made on selling the house I'm realizing have merit. I've asked my grandparents if it'd be a good idea if I move closer to them. They told me that if I want to sell the house, then to go right ahead. My parents will have no clue where I am if I move away, so I'm heavily considering it now. I'm gonna see if the company I work for can transfer me down south. I think I wouldn't mind the warmer climate anyway. I've hated winter since the time I had to live in a tent. I don't have many friends where I currently am as I'm kind of a loner, so it wouldn't be too hard to start over somewhere farther away. I'm attached to this house, but it's not like I grew up in it, so I will consider moving. Yes I understand the need for more cameras, and we'll be looking into that. As for those wondering how my parents broke in and fooled police, well it's stupidly simple. My parents got in through a window I forgot to lock. They just pulled the screen off and opened it to get right in. Then they found my spare house keys I kept hanging on a hook near the kitchen and copied them. When claiming squatters rights to police as well as saying we had a prior verbal agreement, my parents presented working house keys to the cops and lied their little sass off saying I'd let them move in. My parents had also already filed for an address change with the DMV online before I'd even gotten home, and showed police a printout of that they'd made, and said that their new IDs with my address were soon to be in the mail. The cops just looked annoyed, told me it was a domestic issue, and to file to evict them like a normal person. I wish I'd gotten their badge numbers to report them. Small addition, yes my parents had their mail redirected to my house, which is another thing they used to claim residency. The thing is that if they'd lived in my house for more than 30 days with permission, squatters' rights would make them tenants. They claimed they had my permission and used every dirty trick at their disposal to convince police they had the right to be there. There was no way for them to confirm or deny how long my parents had been living in the house, and it turned into a situation of everybody pointing fingers and police didn't know who to believe. That's why I had to go to court to evict them. 
I did refuse to give my parents the Wi-Fi password while they lived with me though since they were not contributing to that utility. However, they just used their smartphones to run a mobile hotspot and got internet that way the whole time they were squatting in my house. Those of you saying that I should leave bad reviews or expose my parents' past. There really is no point. I'm gonna take the high road there and just forget about them. However, if they committed fraud to start that new business of theirs, then I'll get some popcorn when that comes back on them because they'd inevitably call someone for help. Edit 2. For those who don't believe the 30-day thing with squatters, here's a direct USA law on the matter. In most areas, anyone who lives on your property for more than 30 days with permission can claim rights as in the eyes of the law they become your tenants. When this happens you will usually need to carry out an eviction procedure. However, in the case where permission was never given and an unoccupied property is forcibly entered and lived in, there are still rules you must follow. My parents falsified permission and lied about how long they'd been in my house. That's why it took five months to get rid of them. Now you know. Update. Well I decided to make some inquiries and spent a couple of days asking around the family about how my parents got their new business off the ground. It's pretty unusual that they were able to come back from bankruptcy and get a new business started in under two years. No it's not an MLM for those who thought so. Even my parents wouldn't resort to doing that crap. They undoubtedly think MLMs are beneath them. My parents' new business is comparatively smaller than their previous one too. I'd say about half the size. Before they had at least two employees. Now it's just the two of them. Someone pointed out I should be watching my credit for identity theft. I already was and have been since I first started dealing with my parents squatting in my house. I put nothing past them. And they knew it. Honestly though, I'm not sure they even bothered to remember my legal information in the past decade anyway. Hell, I'm not sure they bothered to even remember how to spell my first name. But I did lock down my credit. And there has been no unusual activity on it at all. So my parents didn't try to steal their company funds from me at least. My paternal grandparents, or my good grandparents one would say, are the ones who actually give a damn about me. And they have no idea where my parents got their money to open up shop again. My parents have called them numerous times since they disinherited my father, and they have been refusing to take their calls since they called to brag about their new success a while ago. It's clear my parents had no help from my father's side of the family. So then what about my mother's? Well I still had that old list of contacts my parents gave me filed away. And on that list was the landline number for my maternal grandmother. I did try calling my maternal grandmother back when I was homeless. She did not give a damn. I've never met them in person, but my maternal grandparents are a lot like my parents. Guess my father truly found his soulmate with my mother. As a previous commenter pointed out, they were made for each other. I managed to get in touch with my maternal grandmother once again. And not only was she long divorced from her husband, my maternal grandfather is no longer alive. That was news to me. But he passed away seven months ago. And he left my mother a sizable inheritance. So yeah, that's where they got the money to open up shop again. My maternal grandmother sounded so proud of them too. She had little interest in speaking of much else. And it's likely why my parents called my grandparents to brag about how they are so successful again. They wanted to rub salt in the wound since my good grandparents cut them off. I really don't care though, and neither do my good grandparents. Everyone on my paternal side of the family all say my parents can go kick rocks. They want nothing to do with them. I'm not the only one my parents have jaded. My mother's side of the family are full of divorcees and drunken loners who all hate each other and just pretend to act civil. My father's side are what I'd call just very normal and nice people. My father though burned bridges time and time again. When I was born my grandparents wanted to be in my life, but for some reason my parents kept me from them. Why they did this I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's because they didn't want to be judged on their own parenting. I'd have been happier if they'd sent me to boarding school or to live with my grandparents. But I guess narcissists aren't truly happy if they don't have someone else to put down. I can only imagine the stuff they said about me behind my back my entire life. Either way it seems my parents did nothing illegal to open up a new business. Nothing that can be reported to something like the IRS anyway. No law against using funds from inheritance as seed money to self-employment. My mother, like me was an only child. So she got everything when her father died. Including his house and land. That's where my parents are living now. I've seen a photo my maternal grandmother sent me. Not the nicest house, but not bad. Comparable to my own I'd say. But it means my parents have a place to live scot-free now and likely won't need to bother me again. I want to sell my house and move. But it turns out the company that I'm in the employ of has no branch in Arizona. So it's either I quit and look for new employment in Arizona after selling my house, or I just stay where I am and hope my parents leave me alone. 
I'm looking into job searching because I really don't want my parents to ever find me again. I won't move if it's not feasible, but I'd prefer to be able to. It'd be moot to bother getting more cameras for the house if I want to sell it as a P. But if I end up stuck here because of not being able to find another job in Arizona in the coming months, then I might as well get cameras installed inside and out. I've gotten a lot of good advice on the kinds of cameras to get and where to put them. I kind of doubt the same situation will ever repeat. But I just don't want my parents to ever try to seek me out again for any reason. If they need help when they're old, I'm not gonna care. They'll get what they gave, nothing. They're dead to me for the rest of my life. And the rest of my father's side of the family say the same. If I ever become a parent or step-parent, I'll make damn sure I never become like my parents. No child deserves that. Edit, MLM is short for multi-level marketing. Update, yes if I can't move, then I'll be filing for a restraining order and getting lots of cameras. But I really hope I can move. While I'd prefer to move to Arizona, I would still take what I can get with other states. The company I work for does have a branch in Texas, so I'll be considering that. Just want to live closer to my grandparents. But Texas could work too. I'd like to thank everyone for all the creative advice. It means a lot to me. Story 2. For some backstory, my mom and dad divorced when I was 2 and she met this 19-year-old kid. She was 34 and married him 6 months after she met him when I was 3. They both scared me and my sister for the next 12 years. I was sensually assaulted at 3 years old by a babysitter and my mom knew and did nothing. About a year later she beat me with a yardstick until it broke for sleepwalking and having an accident on a chair. Shortly after this my stepdad would lock me and my sister in the closet with no food, water, or access to the bathroom all night so he could smoke plant and cheat on my mom. He kept doing this until I was in kindergarten and told a teacher. CPS was called and my mom took me out of school and I did not go back to school until fourth grade. A little while after I was taken out of kindergarten he stabbed my mom on the side of her nose bridge next to her eye. She was five to six months pregnant. I had to see my mom with a knife in her face at six years old screaming and crying that they, the police took her husband away. He was in for attempted murder but she fought for him until he got out after, and even a little before. He went to jail he started stripping me completely bare and beating me, not even letting me cover my private parts and even hitting me there. This happened until I was 12 years old and completely developed. My mom would watch or just ignore it. I also had to take care of my little brother, changing diapers and feeding him since I was 7 years old, and doing all the household chores since I was 4. Whenever I was enrolled in school, not very often, my mom would tell me to fight any bullies for minor offenses and would take me to McDonald's when I got suspended. My stepdad would make us stand in the corner for up to 8 hours for something as small as talking after bedtime on a school night. My mom still brags about this punishment. When it was nine my mom bit my hand until it almost drew blood because I scratched a new table while washing the dishes. When I was ten I was abused and strangled by the same babysitter guy and my mom was there and didn't even notice. When I was eleven my stepdad busted my lip twice and bashed my head into a car window because they didn't have a certain game at GameStop. My stepdad was also very racist too. He said the n-word even though he wasn't black, gave us lashings like a slave owner and us his slaves. After he stopped beating me and a KED, he started secretly watching me get dressed and recording me. Around this time he strangled my sister for the first time. He lifted me over his head and threw me. I almost went out the window but my mom caught me. I was 13 at the time. My mom called me the R slur for having trichotillomania hair pulling disorder, and ripped out all my weave and had me and my sister put it back in until 6am then didn't let us go to sleep. My stepdad didn't let us use the bathroom past like 6pm, and I had a multiple years long UTI because of it. We also never had beds and were sleeping on the floor, on the couch, or sharing my godfather's twin-sized bed at my godfather's house. Because my mom spent all her money on cars and fur coats, she told me to become an escort at 13 because I was too old for her to take care of me. When I told her my stepdad was watching me get dressed she said you're lucky he didn't abuse you and let him keep doing it. He strangled my sister until her eyes hemorrhaged for losing the car keys but finding them 20 minutes later. She strangled me for going to my godfather's new apartment instead of the library like I said I would. Beat me in the head with a paint can when I kicked her off of me. Blamed my friend for our bedbugs even though she never came into the house at that point when it was definitely my stepdad from when he ran away for a couple of months. When we were 15 my stepdad broke my sister's collarbone. After it happened we told our mom it's either him or us and she told us to pack our bags and called our godfather to take us away. 
and that she hoped that he left us out to die in the snow. We went to a teen homeless shelter, group home and it wasn't that bad but half the staff were verbally abusive and accusatory. We went to foster care after that and my mom sold the house that was not hers and kidnapped our brother and ran away. He was supposed to be in foster care with us, and she was a fugitive of the state for three years. I didn't see her until I was 17 and didn't see my brother again until I was 18. After foster care I went to live with my grandma until I was 18. I was abused by my grandmother and abused by my dad the whole time. It wouldn't have happened if my mom was normal. My mom went to jail for a while and got custody of my brother after he got out of foster care. Right before I turned 20 my dad attempted to abuse me and he broke my jaw and my shoulder. I moved back in with my mom where she tried to throw bleach in my face and had me cooking food for my stepdad, who lived somewhere else at the time. And when I found out I went to a domestic violence shelter. It sucked. The staff did not extend my time because this girl who was effing a staff member told them I wasn't looking for a place to live. I was the only one filling out the housing search forms and the only one with a job. I had to go to another shelter where I had my crap stolen and I was sensually harassed and violated. I got my own apartment through the first shelter and my mom lives in the same town. She relapsed on crack and alcohol last year and got sober again in February. She also is never home for my little brother and forced him to drink whiskey and he hasn't been in school or to the doctors in three years. She's always out with her sugar daddy and he abuses her in front of my brother. Lately she's been saying she's gonna get a lot of money and I was thinking since my grandma just died and he rich sugar daddy's dad just died, I think that there might be some inheritance might be involved. But my little brother told me that it's actually because God apparently told her she was supposed to win the lottery. My mom is also a religious conspiracy theorist, like some flat earther canon crap. But she got evicted because she genuinely believed she was gonna win the lottery and didn't need a job. My little brother lives with me as of now and she's stuck in a homeless hotel run by social services. I called CPS and am trying to get him put in foster care, but they're not helpful at all. We can't take a kid just because their mom is poor they said. They haven't changed since I was a kid. But she asked to live with me too and I said no, if I could do it at 15 she can do it at 54. And that's where we're at. Thank you for reading. Edit. I typoed and said my dad broke my arm and my shoulder. He broke my jaw and my shoulder. Also, thanks everyone I'll reply to people when I wake up. It's 8.44am and I still haven't gone to sleep fml bipolar mania. My right. Any woo good night. Some relevant comments. It's heartbreaking to read your history. I don't blame you for a second for not housing the person who gave birth to you. I hope you are able to get any help you need to be able to grow away from your past and have a good future. I'm so sorry. You are good and you are good. You didn't do anything to deserve this. You were failed by everyone. Someone should have rescued you. Your mother deserves what is coming to her. I'm a compassionate person but after just four sentences, I was cheering for homelessness. She's evil. What that woman put you through, what you survived. My childhood was pretty traumatic. I have TTM2, BTW. But yours was another level entirely. You're so resilient and strong. As a mom, I can say that yours failed you and deserves nothing from you ever. When you're a parent, you choose every day how to treat your child. Those choices create consequences, good or bad. Let her lie with her consequences. As for CPS, having worked with them I'm not surprised. Who's your state's agency director? Email them with as much info as you have. Tell them how you were rebuffed when you called it in. They need to do something. Your brother is in extreme danger. I have to go hug my toddler now after reading that. Update. It's apparent that nobody gives a F what happens to my brother besides me. CPS said we can't take him just because his mom is poor when she's literally smoked substance in front of him. Doesn't have him enrolled in school. She homeschools him but mostly only reads the Bible and tries to teach him Spanish while not knowing Spanish herself. So I had him living with me in my apartment since like the beginning of May. CPS said the only thing I could do is file for emergency custody which sounds fake as hell. So you're telling me you can't put the kid in foster care, but a random family member can just take him if they want for apparently no reason. Okay I guess. So I went to the courthouse and got the papers, on Wednesday. But literally the very next day as him coming back inside I see my sister leaving with him and he has his suitcase and a bag. I was literally so effing confused then my sister says that he was supposed to tell me that mom is taking him. Nobody told me anything and like where the hell is he even going? My mom doesn't have anywhere to live that's what initiated this whole effing thing anyway. She took him back to our home city that's 45 minutes away from where we live now, 
and put their belongings at a family friend's house. Apparently while they were there my mom renewed her nursing license with money she got from one of her tricks and found an apartment there that she plans on getting when she gets her nursing job back. The thing that bothers me the most though is my sister's attitude towards the whole thing. Because I was in the middle of filling out the paperwork for getting custody of him and she just takes him back to our abuser. Then she says the plan the whole time was for mom to get her stuff together so that our brother could go back to his mom. Um no the F it wasn't that was never the plan. She was with me when I got the custody papers. She says that as long as he goes to school in the fall it should be fine. No no no. This woman let us get acid and beat up since we were three years old. She does not need to be around kids period. And she still spends the majority of time with her sugar daddy and with her tricks instead of with her own son. These people barely even pay her. I know I definitely do not have to means to take care of him but I'd rather him be poor and safe with me than with her and potentially get acid or beaten by whatever sleazy men she has around. Right now they're sleeping at my mom's friend's house around the corner from my place. So I went to go see her and my brother and I got pizza for them from the place I work at because my mom was trying to make my brother split the price of a pizza with her. She's scum to the core. Like you're supposed to be the parent and take care of your kid and you're making him scrape up whatever change he has to feed you. She's a piece of crap. My sister came with me and cried because my mom cut up the collar of her vintage shirt. You know when I cried. When the tramp took my brother and I literally didn't sleep for three days after that. Like I empathize about the vintage shirt, I would have cried too. But the fact that she didn't even cry about our brother and just delivered him to our mom. I'm here just to post about trauma and I try not to talk to heavy on my twin sister because she's been through a lot and most of it is nobody's business but I feel like I want to document all the crap she's done to me too. This is not the first time she's done some shady crap like this and I almost want to call her an abuser too. She scares the absolute crap out of me. I hate everyone and everything right now. Relevant comments. First of all, you are amazing. I mean that. You were kicked out when you were a child, and survived horrible abuse and even though you can't afford it, you are trying to take care of your brother. You are a kind and compassionate person. So know that, first. Now on to the custody. Did the court grant you temporary legal custody of your brother? If so, then your mother does not have the right to take him. She can be charged with kidnapping. Let her know that you won't call the police and report her if she brings your brother back. I assume that the court plans to appoint a some sort of guardian ad litem to advocate on your brother's behalf to determine if you should be given permanent custody. If so, that is actually a good thing, because they will learn how bad his mother is and hopefully award you permanent custody. It's a difficult situation, but you are doing right by your brother. He needs to get out of that situation. Thank you I was really trying my best to take care of him, but I didn't even finish filling out the papers before she took him so he is still in her custody and I'm scared to even submit them because she will be notified that I'm taking him and she has absconded with him for years at a time and was a fugitive, missing person and I don't want that to happen again. I honestly don't know what else to do other than play nice with her just to keep tabs on my brother and be a support for him. That's an effed up way to find out your sister is an enabler snake in the grass flying monkey for your mother. Of course you're furious, your sister effed both you and your brother over. You need going forward, not included your sister in any legal handling and anything else involving your brother because it clear she gladly tell and or hand over your brother to your mother. I knew she was duplicitous as hell but I never knew it was this bad. And I'm too spineless to even confront her about this really and even when I do confront her on shady things she's done she does that weird gaslighty thing where she's like give me a specific time I said. Did XYZ. Oh you can't. Then it didn't happen because I get nervous and can't think straight when that happens. But the funny thing is that when I was an inpatient last year the psychiatrist said the same thing you were saying. He said I need to distance myself physically, financially, and emotionally, because she has it all together and often buys stuff for me and stuff and it makes me feel guilty for even thinking she's duplicitous, but I think that's her intention. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like our videos, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a good day.